In episode five, we know that the two people holding Joel and Ellie hostage are indeed Henry and Sam. Ever since the quarantine zone fell, Henry and Sam have been on the move. They knew that Kathleen would be after them. While many people were happy that Kathleen was in charge, Henry and Sam were not. One by one, Kathleen started killing contributors. They were basically the people that would rat out the resistance to Fedra. But the one contributor she wanted more than anybody was Henry because of what he did to her brother. Finding Henry had become her number one priority. Henry and Sam relied on friends to keep them safe until they could escape Kansas City. The best advice that Henry got in all of this was the fact that Sam was scared because he could see that Henry was scared. The fact is, Henry was scared. He was being hunted by an entire city. And after 10 days, Henry and Sam had to move because they had run out of food. And their connection to the outside world hadn't returned. Kathleen had gotten that guy and killed him. Henry did his best to heed the advice and make Sam feel comfortable while trying to convince him that everything would indeed be okay. But it was a lot easier said than done. They were actually on the move when they heard Joel's truck crash into the laundromat and the firefight broke out. That night, they were able to sneak up on Joel and Ellie sleeping and catch him off guard. While they're the ones holding the gun, it's obvious to everybody in the room that it is not a comfortable situation. Henry doesn't really know what to do, what to say in this situation. He wants everybody to be cool about it, but he also has to defend himself in case Joel does attack him. And Joel's tone of voice isn't really putting Henry's mind at ease, but eventually he does lower the weapons and everybody just kind of chills out. He introduces himself to Joel and Ellie. He introduces his brother Sam as well, and he explains that he is the most wanted man in Kansas City, but he's pretty sure that they're number two. Now that Joel and Ellie realize that they're friendly, they decide to share some food with Henry and Sam. Joel isn't really looking to be friendly with these people, though, but Henry is looking for a partnership. He saw the way that Joel handled himself with that gun, and he knows that he needs Joel to stay alive to get out of the city. But he also knows that Joel is going to need him to get out of the city as well. He knows how to get out, he just knows that it's too dangerous for him and Sam. They need somebody of Joel's elk. When they wake up the next morning, Henry explains to Joel how Fedra fell. Kansas City Fedra was the worst of the worst. Got to the point where when people had a chance, they overthrew the government. Just by looking at him, Joel knows that Henry isn't Fedra, and Henry says, you're right about that. I'm way worse. I'm a contributor. And Joel doesn't want to work with rats, but Henry says, well, if you want to get out alive, you will. Henry then grabs a piece of paper and starts breaking out his escape route. Kathleen has people posted surrounding the perimeter. If they get close to the highway, they're going to get caught. The only safe way to get across is to go underneath. There's a tunnel. So they're going to enter the tunnel in a bank building travel underground, and pop up in a residential area. Head down an embankment, over the river, they're home free. There's one catch, though. Fedra drove the infected underground 15 years ago. So those tunnels should be full of infected, but the thing is, Henry knows they're not. The Fedra guy that he used to work with told him that they cleared out those tunnels three years ago. Even Kathleen thinks that it's overrun with infected, so they're not going to have trouble running into anybody down there. Joel is a little skeptical. So is Ellie. I mean, what happens if you run into one or two? And Ellie says, yeah, what happens if we run into one of those that looks like a blind bat? And Henry says, wait, you ran into a clicker and you're still alive? This is a prime reason why we need you. Henry realizes that it is a dicey plan, but he also knows that it is worth a shot. It's the only plan they've got. Joel doesn't want to admit it, but Henry's right. So a couple hours later, They head off to the bank, find the tunnel, and enter it, and sure enough, it is empty, at least to start. The deeper they go, though, it is empty, until eventually they come across a room that looks like it's a children's daycare. It's completely abandoned, and there's actually stuff to do there, so they decide to wait out until nightfall. As Ellie and Sam play, Henry and Joel get to know each other better. Joel apologizes to Henry, saying, hey, if you were collaborating to take care of Sam, I'm sorry, I didn't know your situation. And that's exactly what it was. Henry tells his whole backstory. Henry was friends with the leader of the resistance movement. It was Kathleen's brother. Henry had a lot of respect for this guy. He was truly a great man. But Sam got sick. He had leukemia, and there was only one drug that could work, and Fedra had it. In order to get it from Fedra, Henry had to give them something big. So he did. He gave them Kathleen's brother. 
which ultimately led to Kathleen's brother dying. This has always really bothered Henry. He didn't want to give up Kathleen's brother, but he also knew that he needed to keep Sam healthy. While he gets depressed talking about this, it does cheer him up to see Sam so happy. Sam playing with Ellie has finally put a smile on the kid's face, something that Henry hasn't seen in a long time. But when Joel proclaims it's time to go, it's time to go. A little while later, they get to the end of the tunnel. They get to the residential area. It's nighttime, and no one's there. It looks like this plan has worked. As they walk through the residential area over to the bridge, somebody shoots at them, and they have no idea where it's coming from. It came from a sniper rifle. They know that. And as they hide behind a car, they figure out that it's coming from a house. It's a lone shooter. Lucky for them, whoever it is has a horrible shot. Joel takes it upon himself to take care of this guy. In the darkness, he sneaks around the back of this guy's house, breaks in, goes upstairs, and there he is, an old man. Joel feels bad for him and tells him, just put the gun down, slide it over to me, and stay up here for another hour. That's all you have to do. He can see in the old man's eyes that he's considering trying to shoot at Joel, and Joel begs him not to do it. And when the guy makes a move, Joel has no choice but to shoot him. As Joel goes to signal to the group that everything's okay, he hears Kathleen on a radio. That old man was working with Kathleen. And before he started shooting, he radioed to her that there were four people outside walking in the street. So Kathleen's on her way. Joel doesn't even have enough time to warn the group. It's Kathleen's men and her trucks that warn the group to their arrival. As Henry, Sam, and Ellie flee from the streets trying not to get run over, Joel grabs the old man's sniper rifle and starts shooting. And he is able to shoot the driver of the truck that is clearing the path for everybody else. That truck drives right into a house, and it's one less thing they have to worry about, but that's one driver when there's about 10 of them. Everybody, though, gets distracted when that truck that crashed into the house explodes into flames. It gives Henry a chance to grab Ellie and pull her to safety. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how many distractions they have or how many sniper bullets Joel has. It's Kathleen and about 30 guys surrounding a man and two children. From the window, Joel can overhear the conversation. Henry offers himself up as long as Kathleen lets the kids go, but Kathleen says no. The girl was with the guy that killed Brian. You know, and Sam's with you. Henry yells, you don't understand what you're doing. And Kathleen says, no, I do. I understand exactly what you did. But did you ever think that Sam was supposed to die? I mean, kids die, Henry. As Kathleen is lecturing Henry on how Sam isn't special, Henry turns to Ellie and says, you take him and you run. He then stands up and offers himself up to Kathleen. And right before she's about to shoot him, that truck that had crashed into the house and exploded, It starts to creak, and then it disappears, because the explosion ruptured the floor, and that opened up the ground, the same ground where all the infected were. And an absolute horde of them come running out of that house directly at Kathleen and all of her men. As Joel is watching this from the house, he's trying to see where Ellie, Henry, and Sam are to keep them safe. But that's when the big boy comes out of the ground, a bloater. It's like a clicker on steroids. I mean, this thing is huge. Imagine The Rock and Vin Diesel having a baby and it gets infected and grows up. It gets extremely dicey for everybody. Ellie, Henry, and Sam, they're all almost killed. They are eventually able to get away and run towards the house, but it's Kathleen who still has vengeance on her mind and yells, Stop! with a gun in her hand. They have no choice but to stop. Right before she's about to pull the trigger, though, She gets attacked by an infected that tears her head off. It gives Henry, Ellie, and Sam an opportunity to get away. Joel joins them, and they get the hell out of there. They find a motel not too far away, and they decide to stay there for the night. Now that they've survived this together, Joel turns to Henry and says, I don't know how I'm getting to Wyoming, but if you guys want to come with, you're more than welcome. And Henry can't take Joel up on that offer fast enough. But there's one problem. Sam hasn't told anybody, but he got bit. He reveals it to Ellie, and she tries to help out, cutting her hand and putting her blood on the wound, thinking that that would make a difference. But when she wakes up in the morning, she's attacked by Sam. He's now infected. The commotion of Ellie trying to hold Sam off gets into the room where Joel and Henry were sleeping, and it wakes them up. Joel dies for the gun, but Henry's able to get it first, and Henry has Joel at gunpoint. 
when Joel makes a move towards Sam, Henry shoots at his foot. It looks like Henry's about to let Sam just tear Ellie's face off, and then he shoots him in the head. When it finally sinks in at the realization of what he did, he turns the gun on himself. Ellie feels really bad about what happened, that she couldn't save Sam. But they can't dwell on it too long, because they have to continue to make their way out west. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.